Awo Shalom Rastafari. This is to go along with this particular um, book right here, The Witness of the Stars. The Witness of the Stars, a new book, a new publication by I and I Society, by the Rastafari Book Club right here. And this will explain a little bit of why the stars, why the stars are important. So we have some vids which we're going to touch on a couple of points, even the the false prophecy. You understand know these false prophecies, like in the Matrix, which says the prophecy is false. Now we get to learn with the revelation of Rastafari that the former prophecies of so-called counterfeit or whitewashed Christianity or the Gentile world system were false. This is what's at the heart of this whole 20. 12 was behind the hype, the truth that's behind the hype. Now, we have a couple of pages here we want you to check out. This page, particular page right here, Lalabella. See the Lalabella symbols. This is from um, one name, um, Wayne or Herschel's site, The Hidden Records. So I'll suggest check it out and, you know, um, check it out for yourself. And this is exploring now um, La Labella and the 11 rock-hewn churches. Now, when we say that La Labella is the crux, it's the proverbial crux or the cross of the matter. This is also from Wayne Herschel's site, this particular site right here, the Hidden Records. And we we'll suggest check this out, the La Labella star map that matches the Egyptian leg of the bull, which is the Pleiades in the Taurus constellation or the Seven Sisters. Now, no doubt you recall that the scripture says, um, um, seek him who, who um, maketh uh, the Pleiades, the Seven Sisters, and, and Orion, right there in the book of um, Job in the Bible. And Job is one of the oldest and earliest books in fact in the Ethiopian canon it's presented um it's presented it, it's presented after the book of Enoch of Hanok some say that Enoch is really Tehuti or there's a link with Tehuti or Tut of ancient Egypt and there's a very interesting uh connection in the Ethiopic with um to hoot and touch. So here we're looking at La Labella. This is uh, Wayne Herschel's hidden record site. We pointed this out, used some of this graphic, some of the graphics here previously. And now here's what's really interesting, how what it says, as above, right here, as above, so below. Now this is speaking about two nearby, what they call G-class sun-like stars that are 17,250 um, years ago. Both stars are around, um, what is it, 370 light years distance from our solar system today. This is exactly where the ancients, the ancient ones, have told us to look, right? Will planets be discovered? Is there some new discovery? Is there really a bigger significance to this whole 2012 um, phenomena? So check out this, this this page right here. So he, he profiles and shows right here, if we can back up and, and, and show you a um, uh, kind of comparison that when you look at the Lalabella complex, it's like the Giza or the Agazi Plateau in Egypt. As above, so below. So there's a reflection. You know, saying the stars do matter, and we're speaking about from a rooted and a grounded um, Judeo-Christian perspective, because a lot of Christians have been deceived and lied to in counterfeit or Gentile, in other words, whitewashed Christianity. But as we see with this information. Um, society, this information superhighway, and as, and as knowledge is able to go to and fro, that much is being learned. So this idea that the ancient peoples, that the ancient peoples were illiterate savages, you know, what's the, the common and what has been the, 
the Eurocentric uh, perspective to it is really being um, is being exposed as a lie, and even more so in a eschatological context as the Great Deception. So here is this particular page, a very interesting um, page, and you can see some of the symbolic links. You've Orient right there as the menorah. So we, we, we get a Hebraic connection to it. And this is the half of the story that we haven't been told about. So the new book that we have out, or the new book that we're publishing, and we've published, uh, Witness of the Stars, a 1921 work by, um, by uh, Bullinger, E.W. Bullinger, is very, very interesting. It's very appropriate now to take a look at this book, which was out, but only a few over the years, you know, if you was in an exclusive society, you know, books and reading, the majority of the people have and still are in a willing state of ignorance. So not only can they not read the language and understand what they're reading, but they're ignorant of this simple so-called um, primitive or basic sign language. So they don't know how to recognize the signs of the time. And we're living in a very interesting and a promising time of change, but it's the ignorance. You, you understand it's, it's that original sin, it's the ignorance. And of those who might know the failure of application of what they do know, that's really a part of the problem. So this page here is really so interesting. Now here's a section about Lalabella, the Lalabella symbol, the sacred cross aligns with the house or the hand of God. This is very interesting. Is this part of the 2012 and beyond? The sacred cross sign, the sacred cross. Now, what is that sacred cross? Lalabella is that sacred cross. This is why we say that Lalabella is the proverbial crux, the proverbial crux of the matter. All right? So now, from a biblical approach, there is a reference point in the stars, even from the very beginning. But man is on an artificial time. I think this is Wayne Herschel right here, his investigation and his studies, which, you know, we give thanks for because many of the Europeans and from the classic um, Eurocentric approach has been to dismiss, has been to dismiss um, Ethiopia and Africa and the whole black the whole black rootage, the Afro-Shemitic, the true rootage of the subject matter. And that has led to a false prophecy, a false prophecy scenario. So we're living, actually, it's like in the Matrix movie in this time of almost like a false prophecy matrix. We're living in this particular time of the false prophecy matrix. So Lalabella is the crux. You see that right there? That's that cross. Lalabella is is the crux or is the cross. Now, how does how is that reflected now in the bigger picture, especially in this time of change? What's the reflection as above, so below? So we see so below with Lalabella and the rock hewn the rock hewn churches of of Ethiopia, as we see right here, Lalabella. It's cut into the, the solid rock, you understand, cut into the solid rock as a cross, a very unique, I mean, on the face of the earth, probably one of the most unique um, kind of ancient art and fact. But what's the deeper meaning? What's, what's the deeper meaning behind Lalabella and the Lalabella constellation, you understand, and, and Lalabella and the heavens? and the revelation of God in Christ. What's the deeper meaning? So we have to go to the witness in the stars. This is why this particular volume here is so very important, and we highly recommend one to get a copy of it or download it for free on the Internet, and if they can afford, then, you know, patronize I&I &I and get a copy of this, get a hard copy of this, because we don't know if, if the internet and technology, if the stars fall, if the satellites fall, then a lot of this technology, a lot of these things, if you don't have it downloaded and printed out, you, you understand, um, you won't have access. And therefore, humanity 
um, would be thrown into a virtual dark age. And even from conservative analysis, this present civilization is built on very shaky, very shaky foundations. But now, here's the link right here from the book concerning um, La La Bella and, and, and the cross. When we go to the Libra constellation, now if you notice that in the Libra constellation, it appears to be scales at a certain level. If you can, if you can um, observe it, it appears to be scales. But at the same time, it also appears to be wheels. So it reminds us of Ezekiel. You know, when Ezekiel looked up and he saw into the heavens, he saw this manifestation here. So in the Libra constellation, we have what is known as the crux, right? The crux or the cross. Now, what's the connection with this right here, with this and La La Bella? Which we can do a split screen, but what's the connection right here with that and this right here? Let's get it right here. With that and this, this rock-hewn church, unique, one of a kind, in this ancient Judeo-Christian nation, which has given birth, in truth, to the Son of Man, to Christ and his kingly character. It says the first shall be last and the last shall be first. Well, Ethiopia is living testimony and witness to this. So as we see this particular um, sign on earth, it's reflected in the heavens when we look at the comparison now to the heavens and we check out this particular constellation right here um, known as um, under Centaur or Centaurus is the crux. Now, what um, Witness of the Stars does is now explain the deeper meaning from a ancient Judeo-Christian and even ancient Egyptian. It really connects properly the ancient Egyptians and the Persians or the Iranians. Now notice the ancient Egyptian and the Iranian link and with the events that are going on presently in a particular interpretation or a particular ancient world view. Now what the author does right here where he's speaking about in the ancient Egyptian zodiac of um, Dendera, this first deacon in Libra is represented as a lion with his tongue hanging out of his mouth as if in thirst. And there's a female figure that's holding a cup, a cup now, or a chalice out to him. Now, under his four feet is the hieroglyphic symbol. This is describing now Dendera in the context of the prophetic scriptures or the prophets or the Bible from a true interpretation, a Wuka or Ethiopian Hebrew interpretation under his four feet is the hieroglyphic symbol of running water. What is all this but the lion of the tribe of Judah brought down to the dusk of death? Think about this. The death or the so-called report of the death of his majesty, the lion of Judah, the connection with Ethiopia, the connection with La Labella, the ancient connection, and saying, quote, I am poured out like water. My strength is dried up. This is a, a quote from the Psalms. I thirst from um, the Gospel of John. And in my thirst, they gave me vinegar to drink. Now, it, it links that the Egyptian, the Egyptian name of this lion, however, points to his ultimate triumph. The ultimate triumph, because in ancient Egyptian, the author here Bullinger points out that it is called Sera, Sera, or Sara, or the Sara, the Sera, that is victory. And then he goes to the next constellation, or Lupus, or the Victima, the victim, you understand, the victim. And now comparing this with the Gospels, linking with the Gospel and with the ancient witness, this is why the Bible would say, I have called my son out of Egypt, therefore the Egyptian, the ancient Egyptian testimony and witness is very, very important, you know, biblically and scripturally. So we're just pointing this out right here because we're not able to go into much of the, the real details about it because a lot of it really ones have to check out for themselves, you know, and find the truth.
for themselves. We'll preach on certain parts of this, you know, as we go forward, you know, making that link with the Lala Bella star map and um, pointing you to this particular site right here um, on the Internet and checking it out for yourself. So this is just a link right here. Check out Hidden Records. Um, check out uh, Witness of the Stars. One can get a copy from www.lojsociety.org forward slash books or can download perhaps a free copy um, on the Internet. And um, also um, check more out about La La Bella as well. So you can even this site that we pointed to previously right here, the La La Bella symbol, or, which is the same site actually right here. You understand? Uh, there's a few... Um, there's a few truly um, enlightened authors that recognize the importance in Ethiopia and the Ethiopian and the Hebrew testimony and even the Rastafari revelation. So, you know, go and uh, check this out, you know, check this out for yourself. And this is another link right here where they show a comparison. This is from the same, from the same site, La La Bella Thigh Shape and a cross church, which is clearly pointing to something that is celestial, something that is heavenly from above. And remember, this is in the same land as the conquering lion of the tribe of Judah of the 20th century, the man, the true man of the century. You understand the unsung, the unsung hero or the Herui, the Heru. So, my brothers and sisters, some more to come. We just, just to kind of um, make that link, you know, with the new book, why we feel this book is, like, very important as ones go into it a little bit more for themselves because what we're doing is discovering these lost keys, these lost keys. These lost keys are very, very, very important. So we're going to do a little more research on this, and as you get an opportunity and chance, check check this out for yourself. This is... um. I think another site right here, I think it's uh, Keys of Keys of Solomon that also touch on that La La Bella connection, the star pattern right there, as you can see, and La La Bella from above with that rock hewn church right there or that cross. And then when we look at the constellation above within this document right here, Witness of the Stars, it becomes clear in this biblical scriptural link with this particular star, this particular witness in the heavens. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament sheweth and showeth forth his handiwork. All right, brothers and sisters, so shalom, rastafari, more to come, stay tuned. Watch and pray. Shalom.